So I bet you've come across the words in the title of this video more than once. And I also bet that if I asked you what each of them mean, you'd have some trouble. Well, that's why you're here, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess. There are three key categories of dose quantities that each represent different aspects of dose. And they are absorbed dose, equivalent dose, and effective dose. And each builds onto the definition of the one before it. So let's get into it and understand what each of them mean and how they're used to quantify radiation dose. Let's start off with absorbed dose. So this is the fundamental baseline of dose quantity, as from this many other dose units are derived or rather built on. Absorbed dose is simply a measure of the amount of energy deposited in a piece of tissue or unit of mass by ionizing radiation, all divided by the mass of that medium. So naturally the SI units for absorbed dose would be, go on, joules per kilogram, that's right. Oh, well done. Now usually when you're trying to convey dose to someone, we use the term gray, or actually mostly milligray, since the doses in medical imaging are relatively small. And the conversion between the two couldn't be any easier. One gray equals one joules per kilogram. So for example, if someone comes in for a CT abdomen pelvis and asks us how much a dose is, we'd say, for example, five milligray, assuming they'd understand that. We wouldn't say it has 0.005 joules per kilogram. The joules per kilogram is mainly used when doing calculations and conversions. Now the gray itself used to be called the rad, which is simply 0.01 grays, but this isn't really used anymore. So we can summarize them all as the following, where one joule per kilogram equals one gray, which equals 100 rats. In my previous video on dosimetric quantities, link down below, I mentioned that radiation exposure used to be measured in Röntgens. So make sure you don't confuse the two. Based on the relationships of the units we saw earlier, it's probably reasonable to assume there's some level of proportionality between these two. And indeed there is. We know that one Röntgens equals 2.58 times 10 to the negative four coulombs per kilogram. Don't worry, I didn't actually know it either. I just Googled it. It's not cheating. And one gray in air equals 2.95 times 10 to the negative two coulombs per kilogram. So if we have one gray, how many Röntgens is that? And also vice versa, if we have one Röntgens, how many grays is that? Pause the video for a second to see if you can calculate it. A few moments later. We simply cross multiply. One gray would equal 2.95 times 10 to the negative two coulombs per kilogram, multiplied by one R all divided by 2.58 times 10 to the negative four coulombs per kilogram. Coulombs per kilogram cancel out, put that in the calculator and we get about 114.3 Röntgens. And conversely, to see how many grays one R is, we again cross multiply. So 2.58 times 10 to the negative four multiplied by one gray, all divided by 2.95 times 10 to the negative two coulombs per kilogram. The units cancel out once again, and we're left with 0.0087 grays, or 8.7 milligrays, just to make it a bit more manageable. Okay, you with me? So that's what absorbed dose is. Once again, it's the energy that's deposited in matter, joules, all divided by the mass of that matter, kilograms. Now there are some limitations with absorbed dose in that it doesn't differentiate between the different radiation types, taking into account their varying levels of biological harm. Because the biological damage that occurs following a dose of radiation not only depends on the dose that's absorbed, but also the radiation type. That is whether it's X-rays, gamma rays, alpha or beta particles, etc. Because a gray of X-rays has the same absorbed dose as a gray of alpha particles. But the alpha particles have a much higher linear energy transfer or LET than X-rays. So they impart a lot more energy. If you don't know what LET is, I've already made a video on it and I'll link it down below. Go check it out. And this leads us to our next dose quantity that is equivalent dose. This takes the absorbed dose and multiplies it by a radiation weighting factor, which represents the relative relative biological effectiveness or RBE of a specific radiation type. Here's a list of each type of radiation and its associated weighting factor, which you can find from the ICRP. I'll link the document down below for you. You can see that photons, that is the X-rays and gamma rays are one, and that's because this is all relative to X-rays. Then protons go up to five, neutrons can be somewhere between five to 20, depending on their energy profile, and alpha particles are 20. Meaning that for the same amount of dose, alpha particles cause 20 times more damage than X-rays do. Kind of important to keep in mind then, don't you think? Yeah, you're right. So again, equivalent dose is the defined as the average absorbed dose multiplied by a radiation weighting factor, which is determined by what type and energy that radiation is, so that the radiation exposure can be better characterized. The SI unit of equivalent dose is still joules per kilogram, but now instead of grays, we use sieverts, and really more commonly millisieverts, given the low doses used in medical imaging. You may also hear the unit of REMS, although not used as much these days anymore, but here's how it relates to what we already know, where one joule per kilogram is equal to one sievert, which equals 100 rems. Don't worry too much about that, it's just for your reference. And here's the formula for equivalent dose. 
where HT, the star of the show, is equivalent dose in sieverts absorbed by tissue T. DTR is the absorbed dose in greys in tissue T by radiation type of R. And WR is the radiation weighting factor of R, which corrects its relative biological effectiveness on tissue T. Make sense? Pretty simple, right? I think I'm starting to get it. So if I take one gray of x-rays and convert them to equivalent dose, what do I get? One sievert of x-rays, that's right. And if I take one gray of alpha particles and convert them to equivalent dose, 20 sieverts, because the radiation weighting factor of alpha particles is 20. All right, cool, we're on the same page now, hopefully. Now we still have one more problem. It's all well and good to estimate the absorbed dose and correct it for the radiation type, but what if I, for example, give a single exposure with a dose of one millisieverts that is tightly collimated to the shoulder, and then another exposure of also one millisievert but now to the breast. Even though it's the same equivalent dose given to the body, this will still result in a very different biological response because the breast tissue will take a stronger hit. That is, it'll induce relatively more biological damage than the shoulder would. And this is due to what we call the radiosensitivity of tissues. Basically how sensitive to damage a piece of tissue is given the amount of radiation. I'm very sensitive. And this leads us to our next dose quantity that is effective dose, which is defined as the weighted sum of tissue equivalent doses and is described with the following similar looking formula. E equals the sum of WT times HT, where E is our effective dose, WT is the weighting factor for the specific tissue, whether it's bone, breast, blood, lungs, stomach, etc. And HT is the equivalent dose for tissue T as discussed earlier. We can find these weighting factors again in the ICRP. Here's the table that lists them all. We can see that bone marrow, colon, lung, stomach, breast, all are highly radiosensitive tissues with a weighting factor of 0.12. And it goes all the way down to bone, brain, salivary glands, and skin not being very radiosensitive with a weighting factor of 0.01. And note that on the far right of the column is the sum of all weighting factors for all tissues adding up to a total of one. The SI unit of effective dose is the exact same as equivalent dose, that is to say joules per kilogram and sieverts. As you saw in the ICRP table, these weighting factors are given to all individual organs and tissues that are known to demonstrate cancer or some sort of hereditary effect. These recommendations do change over time based on the most recent evidence from epidemiological studies, which are just studies on human population that investigate disease control and prevention. Now there is also the issue of age and gender when it comes to to establishing tissue and organ weighting factors. But to make things simpler and actually manageable, the ICRP have averaged the weighting factors across both ages and genders. And this is great, however, it does mean that we shouldn't really rely upon the effective dose to calculate absolute risk to an individual. Once we know how much a quantifiable risk is associated with a certain amount of effective dose, and we know how much effective dose a particular projection or examination has, then we can use these two values to give a population of patients a reasonable estimate of their relative risk. Now calculating risk is a whole other topic that builds upon effective dose and typically relies upon the linear no threshold model. So don't worry about it for now, I'll discuss it in another video. But that's it for this one, hope it all makes sense. If it didn't, just refresh the page. Give it a like if you got any value from it and click here to watch the next video on Kerma, you don't want to miss that one. Alright, stay curious, bye bye.